Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. What's up, Frank? Good to see you, brother, man. Um, tonight I'm going to talk about privacy and the death of it. Um, a lot of people are living under this illusion that there is privacy still. There is no privacy. I can prove this beyond a shadow of a doubt. As a IT specialist, as a intrusion penetration tester or hacker, um, I learned a lot about the internet and I'm going to share a lot of that from my old website. Um, I haven't moved it to climateviewer.com um, for a lot of reasons, but regardless, some of this information is dated. It's still just as relevant today as ever. All the links are already published on climateviewer.com. I didn't want any shenanigans during this live broadcast. So feel free to click the link and hop on over there um, and follow along. So... What we're talking about here today is the spy files, Trump, FISA abuse, and Stone Ghost, and how privacy is dead. Um, these are undisputable facts. Now, everything you're about to see is, of course, open source, free of charge, creative commons, and I encourage you to share this with others as long as you provide a link back to the original. Um, all I ask in return is that if you're going to support me monthly, please do that on Patreon or buy me a coffee or in this case a cell phone, which I just broke my only phone, um, which may be a good thing after you finish watching this video, but regardless, um, you can do that on PayPal. Um, so what are we talking about here? I've got this laid out um, pretty well for you. You can follow all of the links that I'm about to go through are already on here. Um, you can scroll through them. It's gonna be interesting. So over here on my privacy page at climateviewer.com slash privacy is the new world order technocrats and the surveillance state. And this goes right to the heart of what's going on with Donald Trump, the FISA abuses of the Democrat Party, namely Obama and company, and how they weaponize the NSA. And information is power, um, and that's why there is no privacy, because your secrets are valuable leverage that can be used to make a person do just about anything. And I believe that's what's going on in the swamp. <clears throat> I mean, Washington, D.C. So pretty when, you, when you're when you scratching your head and you're saying to yourself, why in the world would they do that? Remember that everything that they say and do is monitored and is used as leverage against them. That includes all the activists that are watching this live on Facebook right now. Um... So what is the New World Order? It started back with something called the British-UK Agreement, or the U B R U excuse me, the U.S.-UK Agreement. Um, basically, in World War II, we told the Brits, hey, we'll come save your butt, but you have to share all of your signals intelligence with us. And by that, I mean all of your spy data. So who's us? Us being the NSA and CIA. So during World War II, Britain agreed to go ahead and share all of its information with us. And slowly but surely that expanded to the Five Eyes or Ozcan Zuckus as it's known in the maritime law, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, UK, US. Um, from there, it went on to become the 14 eyes. Um, I don't know why I always keep saying 13 eyes, but regardless, the nine eyes include Denmark, France, Netherlands, Norway. Then in 14 eyes, you have Germany, Belgium, Italy, Spain, and Sweden. And all 14 of these feed a network called Stone Ghost. And Stone Ghost is the NSA's top of the top secret networks which connect all of these together. Um, you can see these networks on Climate Viewer 3D in real time. 
I have mapped them all out and all of that information heads right back here to Utah at the Comprehensive National Cybersecurity Initiative or um, what's no normally known as the Utah Data Center. This is where Hillary Clinton's deleted emails are. This is where everything the Trump um, campaign ever said or did is stored. Um, this is where the FISA abuses end up. So if somebody's abusing uh, the foreign intelligence surveillance uh, courts, they're actually getting access to this FISA network. Insanity. And you can, uh, you can fly right down to the ground and check that out. Um, see that this map is deadly accurate. Uh, here's a, there's the photo. There's the actual building. It took a lot of effort to create this five eyes map. This isn't even the 14 eyes. This is only the five eyes mapped out and they're undersea cables that they monitor and their surveillance stations around the world. And as you can see, it's a pretty lengthy map already. So let's get back to the brass tags. Why is this important? Because there's basically a revolving door now. Um, you're not allowed to spy on American citizens. So what do they do? They ask Britain to do it. And then it's just transferred through the NSA Stone Ghost Network. And you can see that right here, spy versus spy, the revolving door. GCHQ, um, which is Britain, spies on American and German citizens, Germany's BND, spies on anybody but Germans, and the NSA spies on everybody else, and <laughs> this is a big revolving door. And people talk about Russians influencing the election, will that happen too? Canadian Navy spy sold NSA secrets to Russia for $3,000 a month. Quote, it's a computer system that links the five eyes. The five eyes are the United States, Britain, Australia, New Zealand, Canada. All of their information is shared on the Stone Ghost computer. He meant network. So all of this information is filtered back to the NSA. And then guess what? It's given in raw, unfiltered, unredacted format to Israel, who isn't a member of any of the 14 eyes. Um... And these are just the facts, you know, documented facts. Israel has full unmasked access to the Stone Ghost. That's number nine. You can scroll down to the bottom, hit references, go to number nine and see The Guardian. NSA Americans personal data Israel documents. NSA share raws intelligence with American da Americans data with Israel. Unredacted. Um, so that's not a head scratcher for anybody in my audience. U.S. corporations using Stone Ghost Network, it used to be called Echelon. There was actually a hearing in Europe about that, fearing that the NSA network was being used to bolster American businesses. It has. Stone Ghost versus WikiLeaks happened. Um, whenever WikiLeaks originally came out, they used H.B. Gary, Palantir, Barrico, all of these defense contractors to attack an American journalist, to shut down, you know, any belief in it, print false information, use persona management software, aka sock puppets, fake accounts, fake news, all of that to discredit WikiLeaks. Um, Stone Ghost and Monsanto versus activists in Paris, where they did, came up with a target retaliation list of activists that causes some pain across the EU since this is a collective responsibility. The list should be measured rather than vicious and must be sustainable over the long term. This was a State Department cable from Paris to America, and basically they said, hey, we're going to use the NSA network to target people who don't want GMO corn in Paris on behalf of Monsanto. Scariest uh, post I ever read, and then you can see an entire history of the New World Order going back to the CFR in 1921 through the New World Federalists and the, de the development of the UN, the post-New World map, uh, aka the Gomberg map, and on and on. So, Back in uh, 2012, I wrote this one. Big Brother is watching privacy censorship and staying anonymous. 
And in this article, I really go into detail about, you know, some of the first things that I was learning. And as you can see, almost all of these videos are gone. Um, I had actually had to pull this article. Ooh, that one's there. We've been talking. New Google policy update, which stated basically, hey, we're going to combine all your information for good purposes. The main change is that users with Google accounts, our new privacy policy makes it clear that if you've signed, we may combine your information you've provided from one service with information from other services. In short, we'll treat you as a single user across all our products, which means a simpler, more intuitive Google inter experience. What this actually means is that whenever the NSA wants to know what you've been up to, they have one case file on you that makes it very easy to report on you. Um, in the cases where Google decides not to um, share that information, the NSA has actually hacked Google and taken it. Um, there are documented cases of that. Um, but that's where that's how we end up with things like this. I get emails. Um, I put name removed at gmx.com healthcare list packages, $295 for all 21 complete lists, physicians, 34 specialists database with 788,000 records, 17,000 emails, 200,000 fax numbers. Um, back when I was doing it security, I got many emails, um, like this. Hey, do you want to buy data on people? So your data is for sale. Um, there's plenty of uh, information there on that. Global internet map, customer loyalty cards. Of course, this is another way of tracking everything you do, your credit card purchases. Cell phones, maybe you've heard of Carrier IQ. Well, if you haven't, it was a root kit that was installed on cell phones that was actually tracking every single keystroke. These are called keystroke logging. Um, many different carriers use this and you can see a video on this where a guy literally as he is in airplane mode and you know just showing that every single stroke every movement on his phone is being logged and outputting it to a screen monitor so there's no doubt about that whatsoever so everything you're doing is being monitored that's the point here um, how is the FBI involved here? Well, the FBI, Department of Homeland Security, all of their information leads back to the NSA. So that's the point of all this. Medical records. Ever talk to a doctor and tell them something you thought was private? It is not private. Once it's typed into a computer, it is available to the NSA. It is available to the highest bidder. Or it's available to any mole in the NSA Stone Ghost Network. And this information can be used as a leverage against you. So understand that everything you put into your computer is hackable. There is no such thing as a sec secure computer. And that is the reality we live in today. Um, of course, Facebook tracks everything you do. Um, this video is on tr Facebook. I intend for this to be tracked. I want this to be recorded so people hear it. But whenever you go to any website that has a like button that is embedded in it, Facebook knows you were there. Um, Facebook leaves cookies in your browser so that it can track everywhere you go. Um, <laughs> the list goes on and on. Skype. Um, Everything you do on Skype is recorded. Every second, I don't care how private you think that video is, it is recorded. Um, Microsoft even has a patent for it. Why is my patent not up here on the screen? It should have been next. Let me go back to my article. I'll go back to my article and get it. <laughs> but um, Skype has a patent called Legal Intercept right here. I don't know how that got closed. Trying to be slick on me. Anyway, um, so legal intercept patent application 2011-0153809. And as you can see, assigned to Microsoft Corporation. And just do a little search for the word Skype. And it says right here in a nutshell. As mentioned previously, traditional techniques for silently recording telephone communications may not work correctly with VoIP or voice over IP or other network-based communication technology. 
As here used hereafter, the term VoIP is referred is used to refer to a standard VoIP as well as any other form of packet-based communication that may be used to transmit audio over a wireless or wired network. For example, VoIP may include audio messages transmitted via game systems like Xbox. This is a Microsoft patent. Instant messaging protocols and tra that transmit audio. Skype and Skype-like applications like Google Hangouts, like anything, um, meeting software, video conferencing software, and the like. And this is called legal intercept for a re very specific reason. It's because of something called the Kalia Law. And we'll get into that in just a second. Um, so li er literally, you know, everything is broken into and recorded um, there is no privacy whatsoever, and that's why we have the situation, you know, up at, <laughs> up in the swamp. Uh, 18 U.S.C. 2703, Internet Service Provider Requirements for Government Access. So, uh, whether you're, you know, whatever your Internet Service Provider is, whether it's your cell phone or your home Internet, they are required by law to keep at least a 90 day record of everything you do. Records referred to in paragraph one shall be retained for a period of 90 days at a minimum. Every single packet that goes in and out of your house. And that is so that they can come back and check later if they need to. Um, you know, there have been new, numerous major hacks. There's the, the night dragon attacks by China. Google, Sony, Komodo, SSL, Digital Notar, HB Gary hacks, um, FBI, InfraGuard. If you guys have not heard about LulzSec, maybe you should check this one out. Um, the PlayStation Network getting hacked. Um, the list goes on and on. But the you know this is where it really gets bad. Um, you know this is really leading to self censorship. You know, that the journalists are scared to speak up because they know they'll be spied on. Um, the Obama cor um, Corporation was caught spying on journalists, and nobody wanted to say a thing about it. Uh, we have things like the Great Firewall of China, um, which pretty much shuts down any information flowing in and out of China. Um, Finn Fisher, IT intrusion specialist. These guys are hackers for hire. Um... You know, that basically, you know, they sell software to freaking dictators around the world. So the dictators can monitor the Internet activities of activists in their countries and then go kill them. And this is, you know, a British based company, I believe. But regardless, if it weren't for IT intrusion companies like this supplying software to dictators, there may be more free republics around the world, but it's these companies that keep them afloat, that allow this to continue because they sell to the highest bidder. Uh, when Mubarak was killed, a uh, contract for Gamma International with 287,000 was 287,000 pounds for a license to run Finn Fisher software. The remote monitoring and infection solutions are used to access target systems, giving full access to stored information, the ability to take control of the target system's functions, yada, yada, yada. So they sell you, sell software to Iran, um, to, you know, any of these countries, so that they can, you know, target activists, listen to the bad ones, break into their computers automatically with the click of a couple buttons. Um, and I'm going to show you how that works before the end of this video. Homeland Security blew up in 2011, and we had things like the Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act, CALIA. This was signed under President Bill Clinton in 1994, so this is pre-2001. Um, and it's Public Law Number 103-414. 108 statute 4279 and it's codified at 47 USC 1000 
1 through 1010. It requires all telecommunications equipment made in America to be designed to be easily interfaced by the government for wiretapping purposes. Kalia. So by law, every single device in America is designed with a tap built in, a wiretap, the ability to tap it. Um, <laughs> just It's just a fact. USA Patriot Act, of course, made this even worse. Moving along, unclassified report on President's Surveillance Program, the PSP, and I'm not talking about PlayStation Portable. Terrorist Surveillance Program, the Information Awareness Office, Advise Data Mining Software, Analysis, Dissemination, Visualization, Insight, and Semantic Enhancement for Department of Homeland Security Use, Matrix data mining software in use by the FBI. Um, originally developed for the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. <laughs> Matrix. <coughs> Carnivore FBI software used as customizable packet sniffer that can monitor a target user's internet traffic, replaced by Narus Insight. Ooh. There's an Arus Insight for cyber protection, how it works. It's called a passive tap, and it's constantly listening to everything you're doing and feeding it to the NSA, the FBI, the DHS, so that they can spy on everything. So when you're getting a FISA court order, you're getting access to all of this information. That's the purpose, to get access to Stone Ghost and all of this information. Um... Anyway, Narus Intercept, Narus Insight Intercept, you can watch the video, apparently it's still up. Talon Threat and Local Observation Notice is a database maintained by the U.S. Air Force after the September 11th attacks. Guardian Threat Tracking System by the FBI, Combat Zones That See. Ooh, now this is a very creepy one. This is pre-crime. Um, these are cameras installed in Los Angeles, New York, and a couple other major cities that can say, you know, Jimmy, when he gets up in the morning, he typically goes to the gas station, he gets a coffee, and then he goes to here, and then he goes to there, and then he goes back home. Now, little Jimmy is at a nuclear power plant today, so he is not on his normal route. Alert, alert, alert. This is pre-crime using visual face, facial recognition. Um, there's a TV show about it uh, where they show in every little street cam a little block on people's faces moving by. won't mention the name of the TV show. You've probably seen it, but it's a real thing, and that is pre-crime. And, of course, Fusion Centers and Fusion Center Map. Knock it off, dog, I'm live. Um, and of course, then they had ACTA, fail, then they had SOPA and PIPA, other laws they tried to pass, the Stop Online Piracy um, Act, and then of course, you know, there was the PIPA, which was even worse. Um, this is a very lengthy article, and then I've got this Op New Blood stuff from Anonymous. Shout out to my real Anons. Um, which kind of takes you through how to stay private on the internet. Unfortunately, all of this is bullshit now <laughs> and pretty much was bullshit at the time. There were so many that assumed that they were anonymous. Um, even at the very top of LulzSec, there were two guys named Commander X and uh, Sabu. And Commander X, he went to jail and Sabu worked for the FBI true story look it up um so the next article is big brother supporters countries and corporations and corruption and this is a map called the spy files and in it it talks about you know a little bit about what i just talked about how these companies prop up these dictatorships and they do it through spy software that they sell to the highest bidder or will hack activists for them for a fee 
Um, I've had multiple thousands of att hack attempts on my website. Several were successful. What I had to do to, do to fix this is get the hell off of WordPress, as you can see at the top. This is my resonated.net, which is at r3zn8d.wordpress.com. No longer paying for the um, URL, but you can see that here, web.archive.org, and it's resonated.net, resonated.com. Anyway, um, so they had this map. And it was called the spy files and it had all this wonderful information it's all been deleted from the internet okay um so i dug it up and i wanted to find it and i went over to wikileaks and it says the spy files the map 404 it's gone you got to be kidding me right so i went and i pulled it up on archive.org and as you can see here here's the original spy files map and you can come down here and you can click on different countries like the United States and it'll tell you icons match up speech analysis uh, phone monitoring internet monitoring uh, SMS monitoring GPS tracking and Trojans Trojans is grayed out but they do that too Trojans are viruses that they put in your in your system so when you click on US, it actually brings up a list of the companies, 32 companies. Um, and then right there in the middle, you can see Cisco Systems. Hmm. NetOptics, I mentioned them. Uh, SAIC, MegaNet, HP, you know, Bright Planet, UltraReach. UltraReach is a VPN that was supposed to like really keep you secret mm, no they were selling you out too um, and the list goes on so these are companies that help the government spy on people even in America you can't make this stuff up link is already in the article to the web.archive.org please spread this around so where are we at we're at Department of Homeland Security informatics now most people don't know that the DHS is part of this whole Stone Ghost Network, but basically they are the go-between um, for local police departments and the NSA. So the Department of Homeland Security will fuse information from local police departments into these threat assessment packages, and then those are also provided to the upper echelons, pardon my pun, um, like the NSA. So we're going to come back here to the map real quick and let's turn that on by going to government and surveillance and clicking on Department of Homeland Security Fusion Centers. Now we can see those white dots and you can see things like the Kansas Threat Center, um, Kansas Threat Integration Center, Missouri Information Analysis Center, St. Louis Terrorism Early Warning Group, Statewide Terrorism and Intelligence Center in Springfield, Illinois, and the list goes on. Um, Kentucky Fusion Center, just all of these fusion centers. So not only are they doing border security, but they're busy spying on you and making packages about you naughty activists and that's what we're going to talk about in this. So, Fusion Center guidelines for law enforcement, link to the original, original location, backup file on my WordPress. You can read it there. Um, General Dynamics wins $876 million contract to move Homeland Security headquarters. Gotta love that. And then another $2.5 billion um, from the Army. And they talk about their threat assessment centers, phantom virtual tap for total visibility across your virtual network from net optics videos deleted, but net optics is what they were using. Um, net optics, counterintelligence brochure. These are backed up original locations. They're probably deleted. Um, I would expect that they are deleted, but you never know. These guys like to brag. I'm getting a big fat zero, as we can see here. But like I said, all of these stuff backed up on my server so you can go read it yourself. Gain total visibility for lawful 
interception. Hacking you is called lawful intercept. Um, anyway, moving along, here's how their little map works. You can see, um, you know, that basically your Wi-Fi, your, you know, everything you do goes through these switches. Um, they're forensically monitored. This is the internet. Everything comes back, runs through these switches. This is a layout of what a, you know, monitoring access platform looks like. Um, you know, in a government facility, but integrated monitoring access platform based on tap technology, wiretapping. So that's, that's the, what's the, what, you know, with this, um, anyway, Epic, uh, you know, filed a freedom of information, uh, law enforcement, you know, FOIA request on behalf of, uh, um, you know, what was going on with HB Gary and what happened was, you know, they decided they were going to target WikiLeaks and, you know, shut them down. And basically you see here, Glenn Greenwald, journalist, um, other journalist, volunteer, journalist, American citizens in this block, disgruntled in a separate block. And then other people they could tar target, journalist over here, host of wikipedia.de, that's Deutschland, that's Germany. Um, founder, Julian Assange, troublemaker, confirmed employee, or big red, um, and another red block here, and this guy here, this is the founder, and then spokesperson over here. This is their target organization that's Palantir, a defense contractor, mapping out their target list um, when WikiLeaks occurred. Sad but true. More on that targeting software by the end of this video as well. I'm going to show you exactly what it's called. Um, but HB Gary um, was hacked by a 16-year-old girl from Anonymous, and we learned a lot of nasty things, but HB Gary will begin to develop a kernel mode implant with the ability to exfiltrate, meaning steal your information, and on disk file, open the CD tray, blink the keyboard lights, open and delete a file, execute memory buffer exfiltration over a modem line to a collection station and diagram of how they would do that yeah so stealing all your data all your data are belong to them virginia fusion center terror assessment so this is what a threat assessment looks like from a fusion center and what you quickly learn is they've got domestic terrorisms uh, threats like anarchist groups, black separatist gr extremists, homegrown Islamist extremists, lone wolf extremists, militia extremists, special interest extremism, white nationalist extremism. Everybody's so extreme. Just weird. But this is what we look like, um, us activists. Blue Ridge Earth First, Earth Liberation Front. Now, I understand they blew some places up, Elf. Um, but if you, if you have a group, you know, if you form a group of activists, you're going to end up in a threat assessment and watched very carefully. Um, this is proof positive of this. This is from the Virginia Department of Homeland Security Fusion Center. Moving along, you can see deleted videos, but there's basically this thing called po Pose Comitatus. And it basically says that the military, the NSA, um, they're not allowed to be involved in law enforcement. But what happens is law enforcement willingly shares its data with the fusion centers, which willingly shares its data with the NSA, which puts it all into the Stone Ghost Network, and all of which is available to Israel free of charge. So trying to update this information, we go to 2017 because basically these articles I showed you, this is all written in 2012, all in one year, the three articles I've shown you so far on my old blog. Back when I used to be anonymous and only, everybody only knew me as resonated. Um, so updating this, Five Eyes of the Deep State, Stone Ghost Exposed. I made this nice little video about it. And what you know, um, that didn't go so well. 
So at the time I was using something called Pearl Trees to try to map all this out. And Pearl Trees used to be like a brain map and everything was like linked in a certain way. Now it looks more like Pinterest, so I stopped using it. I'm gonna use something similar to it in the future. But basically you can see a lot of the points I'm making here. And if you come right here to the post 9-11 police state, you can actually see all of the five eyes, the 14 eyes, and their information that's relevant to each one. So an example, let's go to, where's the US? Why do I not see the United States in this list? It's been forever since I've been here, but they're basically supranational unions. That's the term they like to use. And you know, how they have these, all of these communities that you know, share information, um, and that's how the NSA is able to access all this information because they willingly share it through these New World Order supranational unions. Um, there's the U.S. So you go into there, and that's when you see things like the U.S. signals um, system, SIGINT system, USSS, um, things like the persona management software solicitation. This is a virtual machine that allows a military operator to run 50 Facebook accounts simultaneously, 50 Twitter accounts simultaneously. It is done through virtual machines. Um, what does Israel do with that information? What does anybody do with that information? They use that information for leverage. That's why people spy on people to use it for leverage, period. Watch the TV show Leverage and you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, but yeah, that's, that's exactly what's going on here. U.S. Central Command friending the enemy in psychological warfare. U.S. CENTCOM. Um, but yeah, I used to use this thing called Pearl Trees. Um, it was very useful at one time. Now it's kind of harder to U.S. spies on UK for UK. Um, you know, different spot legal intercept laws, where I go through the ones that I covered earlier. Unclassified report on President Surveillance Program. Um, all of this is already linked on ClimateViewer.com in one article. Just so we're clear. And this video is proof of that. So I did this video about Stone Ghost, um, and this was dated April 7th, 2017. And I had an interesting little event shortly thereafter on April 23rd, 2017. Um, this happened. He can swivel that thing around and destroy this house in one shot. <laughs> I'm sure that's that that's got to be computer controlled as as, as, as wave. yeah wave to him. Oh, oh he's gonna come show y'all. Right, he's gonna blow us up. <laughs> Holy shit, y'all look up. Come back here. Come back here. Come back over here. Come back over here. Everybody wave. I'd like to point out for the record that his 30 millimeter cannon is pointed at me. And the reason it's now pointed away, but <laughs> yeah, that, that happened. So um, pretty interesting stuff. I mean, you, you get some you get some weird things happen every now and then. You just kind of scratch your head. He was actually hovering in my front yard for the better part of 20 minutes um, over private land that's owned by somebody who goes to church with me. So I know that it's not like he was hanging out in a military field on a military operation. But regardless, things like that happen. When I was on a beach um, outing, I was approached by an NSA guy who literally interviewed me for three hours. Um, by the time we were done, he was agreeing with most of what I had to say and, and was admitting that many people at the NSA are disgusted by what's going on with mass surveillance. 
Um, you know, I was talking about this before Edward Snowden ever said the first word. But regardless, that's the way things be. So Facebook's silent censorship of activists, this is another problem we all have to deal with. Um, you can watch my video on that. It says keep posting a reel-ish and watch your friends list cleanse itself. It's one of my favorite memes on the internet. Um, put my own little stank on it. So, you know, Facebook, many people were going through this. You go, you post something, and immediately it's gone. Um, like instantaneously. Ooh, I actually clicked over to that link. Didn't mean to do that. Too many links already. But regardless, you know, I would post things like this. Like I made this, you know, and I did this. I actually have a solution to geoengineering, yada, yada, yada. And that's because they're really not there, you know, um, and you can see the original post there, but basically it went from all of this to, I hit refresh page and there was nothing there. It didn't warn me. It didn't say it was spam or anything. They just totally deleting my comments on the fly. Um, so I'm very censored as a lot of us are. Um, and that's because they hear and see everything. You, um, not much you can get past them. 14 incredibly creepy surveillance technologies that Big Brother will be using to spy on you. Um, this is also dated 2013. Pre-crime surveillance cameras. It's the ones that we already talked about. Capturing fingerprints from 20 feet away. Mobile backscatter vans. These are x-ray vans that can look into your house. They can look into vehicles. Oh, by the way, you know, they normally put a lead shield on you whenever they take x-ray and get the hell out of the room. But somehow the FBI is allowed to run around with vans that can x-ray through the walls of your house. Can you imagine what kind of people cooker that is? Um, hijacking your mind from DARPA. Please read these. These are great. Unmanned drones in the U.S. airspace. Back to the map. So I come over here and right under DHS Fusion Centers, I click on UAV drones over the United States. And now we can see all of the reported drone activity by military, police, and other. Um, if you click on the very first one, Know Your Drones, it will actually show you all of those drones like the stealth drone super secret rq-170 stealth uav um the rq-3 dark star um you know predator drones uh hunter drones shadow drones handheld throne drones you can see the military you know your army guy toss it into the air it's called a raven um they can launch them from a catapult on the ground and these basically, it's called a scan eagle. It can fly over your house and do circles. They got VTOLs, vertical takeoff and landing, like helicopter drones. They even have versions of these drones that can hover over your house and hack your Wi-Fi network. They can hack your screen. They can even look at your screen without even hacking your computer, as scary as that may seem. Um, Okay, so where were we? Let's go back over here. So that's drones in America, and then right underneath that, I have a map of drone no-fly zones. And as you can see, these pink areas are military. So any of these pink areas, you're not allowed to fly drones because they are operated and owned by the military. Michael Army Airfield dug away proving grounds, Utah. Um... But basically, all of these green areas, too, are do-not-fly zones. Here, I'll make it black so they're more obvious, but there you go. These are drone no-fly zones. And they are like that for a reason. There are obviously things that they do not want you to see, and the map is dotted with them. So, you want to find some interesting crap, go look in those zones on Climate Viewer 3D. Very interesting stuff. All right, so where were we? Let's go back over here. So then, uh, did carry our IQ already. 
biometric databases, you know, whenever you're giving your um, DNA to Ancestry DNA, know that that it will be put into a package in one day. Um, they've already shown that your memories are stored in DNA, memories from your ancestors. There will come a day where they'll be able to access that DNA and know things about your entire family history that you cannot even imagine. Um, RFID microchips in children, we've heard about those. Automated license plate readers, and you know they also have the you know software that can hack your phone. Many Stinger, um, many police departments already have this. Face recognition software, um, pretty bad, pretty bad stuff. Data mining, um, we all know about data mining. That's what Facebook and Google do. Street light spying on you, yes, it's a thing. Mm -hmm. Automated ISP monitoring of your internet activity, a Kalia law, um, like I told you guys about earlier. Um, spying on you through appliances. More on that next. So, what do they mean by spying on you by appliances? Congressional act to require on-screen notification. We are watching you when you're being recorded. So, if you've got a smart TV... Um, I believe this was a Samsung model that was busted doing this. But uh, last week, IT consultant Jason Huntley uncovered evidence that the his LG flat screen television, which had been sitting in his living room since the summer, was secretly invading his family's privacy. So what are they doing this for? I'm skip to the fun part. Basically... The Blu-ray, um, the movie industry, they want to know how many faces are watching this screen. Fact. And the reason they want to know is because you know that little thing at the beginning that says it gets against the law of the FBI for you to broadcast this to, you know, a whole audience and, you know, this is for personal use only. You know, you could be fined up to $250,000. That warning that was at the beginning of every DVD you ever watched. Well, now with these smart TVs, they want to count how many faces there are. And if you're in violation of the terms, literally kill the Blu-ray or kill the stream. Um, just amazing stuff. So a guy literally introduced the We Are Watching You Act, which was House Rule 2356. We Are Watching You Act of 2013 was not passed, but it would have required that, um, you know, on screen, whenever this is occurring for legal intercept purposes or whenever the Motion Picture Association wants to spy on you with your TV, that the, that exact terminology showed up. You know, we are watching you. So that also hap happened with the Kinect cameras that are on the Xbox. I don't know if you've seen this. Um, information on that. As such, Consumer Detector uses... Consumer Detector uses data from the camera to capture device 102 to determine the number of consumers. The Consumer Detector anal analyzes one or successive images from the camera to figure out how many people are watching the screen. Um, Motion Picture Association gone wild. And you put that together with Microsoft's Legal Intercept patent and Trapwire. Trapwire is the pre-crime software that I was describing earlier. Jim is not where he should be. Um, they caught him on facial recognition software out of his regular zone. This came from the Atlanta InfraGuard hack um, by an anonymous member. And Trapwire is pre-crime. Look it up. Trapwire. Or just go to the links in the article and read it yourself. So we're going to go ahead and skip ahead quickly on the rest. NSA devises radio pathway into computers not connected to the internet. And this one's super creepy. Um, basically, they put a transceiver planted inside a USB cable into target computer. It could be a flash drive. It could be anything. 
And then they catch it with an antenna outside the building. They can have full access up to eight miles away. Creepy, creepy stuff. Link the article on that. Um, read it, read it and weep. So you don't even have to be on the internet for them to get in. They'll break into your house. They'll plant chips, all kinds of stuff. If you're a big enough threat, obviously the Trump campaign was a big enough threat. And that's exactly what they did. NSA Tempest attack can remotely view your computer and cell phone screens using radio waves. Um, I was actually cited by export.gov because of this article. But basically, this is a drone that did exactly that. It's called war driving. It's looking for Wi-Fi's that are open so it can hack them. Um, but basically, you can watch this guy do it. Um, you have an antenna, it measures the microwave, the radio frequency emissions coming off of your monitor to listen, um, you know, and then here's an example screen readout in black and white of just that. And all they're doing, no wires, just an antenna. Um, it's called Van Eck Freaking if you're an old school hacker like myself. Um, but Van Eck freaking was the original eavesdropping on contents of CRT and LCD displays by detecting its electromagnetic emissions. Uh, video deleted. No? Yay! Breaking secrecy of the ballot with radio scanner. Voting computer tempest attack. And literally, while a person was voting, you know, um somebody stood outside and was able to read every single vote through a tempest attack can't make this stuff up that's an actual nsa tempest um equipment it's a directional antenna and it listens for the radio frequency emissions coming off your monitor so they can see everything on your screen they can do this from your front yard um typically a hundred feet to sometimes up to eight miles just like the other article described um, they can actually hear the sound of keystrokes with this and know what you're typing so they don't even have to install software to be able to hack you um, you know you're in there typing your password and based on the speed and and many factors um, recreate that guy does this at home in a video in this video right here you can watch it um, and then finally, I've got some war driving information and a whole bunch of information on Tempest attacks and Van Eck freaking there. I hope to get some Tempest rated monitors um, for myself, but they're very expensive. Um, I'm electromagnetically sensitive, so it would be great for me to get monitors that do not give off any radio frequency emissions um, for health purposes, let alone the fact that you know, I always feel like somebody's watching me and I have no privacy. So then I rolled this together for, you know, this recent FISA abuse thing that's going on for Trump. And, you know, it's in this latest article. This one was dated April 29th, 2018. FISA abuse, NSA stone ghost, and the five eyes of the new world order. Um, check it out video references same kind of map um but this is a very interesting one this stuck out for me for everybody who's a trump hater but is also a bohemian grove globalist new world order hater i want you to read this and weep hacked colin powell email bohemian grove attendees will vote against trump some support third party candidate Peter, I'm back. This is Colin Powell. Um, Peter, I'm back from the Bohemian gr Grove. Surprise, surprise. I sat next to Stephen Harper a couple of times and had a nice discussion. Grove attendees know that Trump is a disaster. Most will vote against, but quite a few will not vote for Hillary and will vote for a third party candidate. All the best, Colin. So as um, George Carlin said it best, it's a big effing club and you're not in it. And the big effing club agree that Trump is a disaster, a problem. So I'm with that guy for that reason. And that reason mainly. 
but you can go check out Technocracy Rising, the Trojan Horse of Global Transformation by Patrick Wood, and know that this is about technocracy and communitarian law. And that's what Hillary is going to issue in. And Trump is anti-technocracy and anti-communitarian law. He has proven this by pulling out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, by pulling out of COP21, by telling the UN to screw off multiple times. That's why they hate him. And I predicted on Facebook before the election, because you can see this is November 7th, 2016, election prediction, Trump wins in landslide, New World Order says Russians hack the election, landslide fake. And I knew all this because a certain CIA shill was on Charlie Rose uh, projecting the day before. Because they knew. They knew they were going to lose. Even after spending a billion dollars in the whole Bohemian Grove throwing everything they had at it, they still lost. Um, and we've been winning ever since. But yes, that was my prediction beforehand and I was completely right. Um, so anyway, check this article out. You know, and then I go rip on Trump for possibly supporting geoengineering. But regardless, if the Bohemian Grove hates Donald Trump, if if he comes out and he says, I don't trust the CIA, and Chuck Schumer says the CIA's got a hundred ways to get back at you, you're looking at it. It's called the Stone Ghost Network. It's all these surveillance techniques, and that they're all being employed against him to do everything they can to shut him down. So how do they do this? How do they hack people? I'm going to summarize with the, the actual tools of the trade um, because I've used them all personally. I've even used them in my activism when I was targeted by fellow activists, um, some YouTube Nazis who decided to make 500 YouTube videos about me. Um, over a year and a half and destroy my Alexa rank and do black hat SEO to destroy climateviewer.com. Um, and I still suffer from that to this day. You know what? I haven't got around to fixing the SEO, bad backlinks and all that stuff because I'm just so busy putting out new stuff. But regardless, the tools of the trade. Oh, before that, solutions. So how do you how do you try to avoid a lot of this, you know, this spying and censorship? You can't avoid it all. If the government wants your ass, they're going to have your ass. But for at least the script kiddies as they're known, these, you know, punk trolls that are on Facebook that are hijacking Facebook groups and stuff, best operation you can do is go to prism-break.org and involve yourself in some you know, open source software. So let's say you're on Windows. I'm going to click on Windows. Anonymizing networks, Freenet, NewNet, I2P, Tor. We'll talk about those two. Um, bookmark syncs, disk, disk encryptions, DNS. I use OpenDNS myself. I suggest, highly suggest everybody looks into using OpenDNS. Um, that's the directory naming system. Whenever you type in google.com, it calls a little telephone book. It answers back the IP address for that is this. And that's how you get to websites on the internet. Using OpenDNS is a way to keep your internet service provider from having DNS records on everything you're doing. Many, many steps you can take to anonymize your access to the internet. It's totally up to you how many you choose. But these are great. Um, Riot is a collaborative, uh, you know, speaking chat thing. I just, you know, made a Discord um, chat, but I'm actually considering using Riot because it's blockchain, it's encrypted, and all that. So I may have to change that in the near future. But regardless, RetroShare, it's kind of like Skype. Um, you got to check these things out. So all these email clients, email encryption, the list goes on and on. So there's many different versions of open source. And by open source, it means that the entire code for this program is publicly available and reviewable by other people. So you can review the code and know that it's not, you know, got back doors in it that are listening to everything you're doing. 
um, as an example Climate Viewer 3D, the map that I was showing you guys, is available on GitHub. And that is the, the gold standard. If you want to know if something's, um, you know, open source, like this map you're seeing here, the code that I wrote for it is available on GitHub. And you can come right in here. You can click on Distribution, JavaScript, Climate Viewer 3D. And you can actually see all of the code that I wrote to make this map happen. Take your time, go through it. Um, but that's the, that's the definition of an open source program. Um, you know, things like Google Chrome, like Steam, um, you know, any of these other programs, even Minds.com, all these social networks that claim to be open source, not a single one of them is. Um, I'm actually, you know, for the last seven years, been working on an open source social media platform called Natention. Don't want to get into it this video, but regardless, one day it will come. Um, so Tor is one of the anonymizing networks that is most popular. And people believe that if they use Tor that, you know, the government can't see what they're doing. And... Unfortunately, Tor works on something called onions. They have these exit nodes. And if your exit node is owned by a government entity or, you know, it's connected to the freaking internet for that fact, it is connected to an internet service provider. And that internet service provider is tracking everything and has been forever because of the Kalia law and multiple other laws. So, um, while some people swear by Tor that it anonymizes you, it can keep your information encrypted so that your local internet service provider may not be able to see your information. You can take it a step further and do a virtual private network over Tor, which will, you know, increase the layer of encryption so that when you're typing in web addresses and everything that it's encrypted and your internet service provider cannot, um, you know, see what you're up to. Um, another one is I2P or the Invisible Internet Project. I2P, I do not suggest most people use this. This is for only the extreme and I2P um, has some very naughty material on it. There was a website called The Silk Road and they sold children on that website. So there, there's a lot to be said about the debate between privacy and too private and what should be allowable and what is available. Um, and that's a discussion for another video. But how do we find this balance between our privacy and you know what's available on the internet? And I find that with a lot of the I2P websites, that I've seen, um, they go way beyond what I ever cared to see with these eyeballs. And it's very stressful and will never leave my soul. So I suggest highly that unless you are very daring and want to see some crazy stuff, um, don't try I2P. Regardless, even if you get on I2P or Tor, Kali Linux is the number one distro on the planet for, um, by distro, I mean distribution. It's a Linux operating system specifically designed for hacking and it's free. So anybody with enough time, um, that wants to learn how to hack, you can go grab yourself a book like this you can get yourself a copy of Kali Linux and you can pretty much break into any computer on the planet because generally all that it takes nowadays is for you to have something like Flash or Java on your computer if you have Adobe Flash or Oracle's Java on your computer 
and it is not up to date. And in many cases, even if it's up to date, um, there are many viruses that are designed to take full control of your computer using just those two. And that list goes on and on. Every piece of software on your computer is a vulnerability. Um, and Kali Linux is a kit that does everything from Wi-Fi password cracking to network mapping to um, testing computers to see what their vulnerabilities are, deploying viruses to them. Um, I use this on my local network when I was running a tire shop that had five stores and I could literally in a couple keystrokes tell out of the 70 plus PCs which ones had active vulnerabilities um, which ones could be hacked and we were getting hacked by China every single day it was part of something called the night dragon attacks and the Chinese government's um, goal at my tire company was to get access to our price data sheets and once they had access to our price data sheets they immediately started sending mass emails going wouldn't you like to buy fine Chinese tire $79 we know that your your price is $89 you know and they would try to undercut us so that we would buy the Chinese product instead of the American product because they had been hacking our network um, it took me six months to finally kick all of the Chinese bot NT servers out of our network um, and of course my you know elderly boss who owned the company really didn't understand a word of what I was saying when I was explaining to him what was going on but his younger CEO son um, he did and you know anyway it was an experience kicking the Chinese out of a tire company but this is economic warfare it goes on a daily basis and it's all done through hacking and how do they do this um, programs like Nexpose which are built in um, to Kali Linux um, they're called vulnerability scanners now if you go to the high end of Nexpose like Nexpose Enterprise it comes with the viruses so you can literally get an expose find some you know jerk who runs a chemtrail forum which I won't name who doesn't like somebody so post their IP on his forum something with skywatch in the title and because he has now outed somebody's IP address which is your personal phone number for your computer Somebody can take a, a program like Nexpose and type that IP address in and then scan that computer. And it'll say, you know, Jim's Adobe Flash is out of date. I have 22 known viruses that can take full control of this PC. Deploy. Click one button and it'll send that virus to that computer and say, success and you have full control of that computer. That's what being a script kitty is all about, is that there are apps that make all this hacking simple now, and Nexpose is just one of them. There are many like it, um, but this is built into Kali Linux. It is free. You can, of course, be a government entity and pay for the enterprise version and get zero day viruses. Zero day meaning, no virus scanner on the planet currently has a definition for this virus. Meaning, if they hit the go button, you are infected, they will own your computer. Maltigo. This is how I caught the guys, the five of them, that were making 500 YouTube videos about me. Um, if I were to say the names of these five individuals, most of the people watching this video would know them because they have over a hundred thousand subscribers but Maltigo is what um, they were using to do WikiLeaks as well and if you look right here at the Maltigo XL um, let's look at the smaller one because this does millions of nodes we'll look at the 
classic and it'll give you a better idea but basically you can see here's an IP address well it's connected to these IP addresses and all these people are talking together and over here on the list is a list of individuals and basically this individual posted on all of these websites right there in the middle is the individual we'll call him jerk and jerk posted simultaneously on all these websites did a lot of posting on this website um, and you can create a network map of what individuals are up to um, this is done through something called link data not metadata link data um, Maltigo it's a reference you know um, chart for making data graphs to show how organizations work how people use multiple social medias to track down bots to track activists and see what the hell they're up to also Maltigo built into Kali Linux can't make this up and that's why we have things like this um, this is the digital attack map um, showing de distributed denial of service attacks from around the globe um, right now the timeline is running in February I could move it up more towards today but we're constantly in an internet war um, and that's why everything you think is private is not there are there are individuals who are paying for this data you can rent these infected PCs by the hour they're called botnets or zombie nets so once they've infected your PC and they have full control of it you can meet a hacker dude who will literally say hey for a hundred thousand dollars I will rent you six million computers for one hour and during that hour you can find your competitors website and literally shut it off that's called a di distributed denial of service attack um, there have been many documented cases of this they're constantly going on and that is internet war um, an example the Chinese when they ha ha hacked the office of uh, uh, personnel OPS um, data um, basically they got the names and addresses of all of the military um, secret contractors all of that when they did OPM um, when they did that hack they flooded the system with a, a DDoS attack so that there were so many attacks coming in that the one attack they should have been watching for they couldn't see signal to noise ratio so there's constantly massive volumes of attacks going on on the internet um, and this is just the way the way the internet's going to be from now on um, so there is no privacy and you can check the best way to keep up to date with this my personal suggestion is go to um, the hacker news um, I find it to be the best source of keeping up to date with some of the crazy stuff going on on the internet nowadays um, pretty crazy stuff going on right now Google developers discover a critical bug in modern web browsers June 20th um, and that's all web browsers thousands of mobile apps expose their unprotected Firebase hosted databases thousands of mobile apps you think you're private you are not every single day it gets worse oh wait chemtrail fans popular flight tracker flight radar 24 suffers data breach i wonder why somebody would hack flight radar 24. you tell me but the hacker news is a great place to keep up with this stuff the stuff you're gonna see there will blow your mind because it's constantly going on and there is no privacy left and it all goes right back to the NSA stone ghost network and how not only the Democrats not only the Republicans foreign officials Israel companies like Monsanto everybody wants access to this information 
And the reason they want it is because information is power. And power is leverage. And leverage can make you dance. And that's why there is a swamp in D.C. Because every single one of these people have a secret. And once known, they will dance. And they will do their bidding because somebody knows something about them. So that's why there is no privacy. It is by design. It is built into the hardware. Um, and I don't know what to do about that other than treat my computer as if every single keystroke that I make will be seen by somebody. I unplug my webcam from my computer every time I finish a broadcast. I unplug my microphones from them. I do not allow my children near them. Whenever we have our Connect little, you know, play toy with our Xbox, it's facing a wall at all times except when in use. Um, I put tape over it sometimes. The, there are so many ways for people to monitor our lives today. And I like to be able to choose the ones that I share with the internet. It's becoming very, very hard. And for the, the typical activists, I can only imagine what you're, you're thinking seeing this video. Um, you know, I've been in, in, com, on a computer since I was 12. I'm 41 years old. I used to hack people. I do it now um, as a part of my business. I will go to a company and I'll say, look, let me go out in your parking lot and break in your computer network and then I will fix it for you for a fee. That's called intrusion prevention or white hat hacking. But there are many black hats out there who are just nefarious and others that work for the government and there are others you know, who just do it for the lulls. Um, but hacking is a thing, it's going to be a thing and you know, that's, that's the real big story. And everything that, you know, happened to Trump is just like, it's just like the worst case scenario that it would come out in such a public way that, you know, that they were spying on a president trying to, you know, basically screw your election, blame it on the Russians, my butt, um, blame it on the NSA, blame it on the FISA courts. And, you know, the fact that we even have a Stone Ghost Network, because if it weren't for these spy technologies, if it weren't for all of these secrets and all of these software manufacturers who enable the industry that spies on everything simultaneously and sends it straight over to the Utah Data Center, um... If it weren't for that Utah data center, most of this wouldn't be a problem. But, you know, China has its network. Russia has its network. Everybody's spying on everybody. So this is something we have to live with. And we have to understand that, you know, they're going to do it no matter what. And, the, you know, there are those who choose to fight back. I don't do that because, you know, I don't break the laws anymore. I've got kids. And that's why I'm on here with my face, you know, telling you this story because our privacy does matter and it should be respected. And unless somebody has been proven to have committed a crime, then go hack the hell out of them. Find out everything you need to know about it. But magically, oh, a guy shoots up Las Vegas and his hard drives are missing out of his laptops and nobody can find a thing out about this guy out. Hillary deletes her emails and, oh, there's no records of this whatsoever. Um, all of this is BS. It's just complete BS. So if, if I knew that, you know, this was being used for good, this would not be a problem. But what I've been able to find in my research is that not only has the Stone Ghost NSA network been violated by Russian spies for $3,000 a month, sold out to Monsanto, work for Raytheon, and all these other companies' benefit. It doesn't work for my benefit. Um, and in many cases, you know, the FBI has literally sat, you know, set people up. Here's a bomb. You go blow something up. And then they're like, look, we stopped a terrorist. Um, because they knew the kid was mentally unstable because they had been spying on him for months. Um, so that's why this is a problem. 
um, we got to talking about privacy on my Facebook page and I thought, you know what, I might as well show you this big picture because there is no such thing as privacy. Um, and I treat my computer as if it were an open book. There's not a file on my hard drive that if somebody were to get into it that I would not be ashamed of because I know anybody can get into it. And I've taken every precaution to keep people from hacking my PC and haven't had anybody break into my computer in seven years. I've never had my computer die from a virus because I'm very secure in what I do. Um, and that's me using Windows. Um, but still, that being said, you know, it's a risky business. And my websites were hacked multiple times. I had to go and rewrite them all to be static files. They have... So I'm no longer on WordPress. What you're seeing on here is something called Hugo. It is a static file generator. Um, basically, everything I write is in something called Handlebars and Hugo. And you can see the article that I wrote tonight, the spy files, Trump, and you know, yada, yada. The database information is in text in the text file, and all of the links and everything are in Markdown, as you can see here. And when I go and I type Hugo and I generate my website, it puts my entire website into a public folder right here. That's the entire website, index and all, and I just upload it. That way I don't have any I don't have any databases. There are no logins and passwords for you to hack on climateviewer.com or weathermodificationhistory.com or climateviewer.org. The only way you're going to hack it is if you go hack GoDaddy and their Apache server. So I've done everything I can to try to keep my website online for seven years because the information I have is very powerful. I've been targeted by powerful individuals multiple times and I'm still here. And I can only imagine um, what it's like for other activists. I've met many who have been hacked and had their entire history deleted. Um, it's a rough world out there. But there are steps you can take to secure your computer. There are, you know, levels to this, you know, player tier Masu. Um, but at the end of the day, if the government wants in your computer, they will get in your computer because by design, it was designed to be tapped. That's the moral of the story. Every cell phone, every PC has a back door in it. Um, I've plugged my back doors pretty well, but if you're running an Intel chip, it's got virtualization on it, man. I mean, I don't want to get too technical, but regardless, until we have open source hardware to go with open source software, this problem will continue. And, it, and the first person that builds open source hardware that has no tap in it, the government will run them off the internet. Askkim.com. Um, so that's the big story, guys. Once again, I, you know, stay protected out there take take the level of privacy that's best for you i you know tend to rock a virtual private network um, as you can see i'm rocking nordvpn right now as we're doing this show um and a virtual private network is a great way to secure your internet so at least your internet service provider can't tell what the hell you're up to um, and that's like step one um, and there are many steps beyond that but Get educated on privacy. Um, and if you guys have some suggestions for me personally, hit me up at jim at Um, You know, my email is right up here at the top. Um, my phone number is right there, but as I previously mentioned, my phone just got smashed. I am phoneless at the moment. So please, if you could find it in your heart, hit me up on PayPal. Um, and you know leave me a comment in the you know and i'll check it out you know on the video is this will be on youtube later and i'll post this to the article itself um and once again that article is the spy files trump FISA abuse and stone ghost privacy is dead and everything i just showed you is linked in this article down to the last bit of it um, take your time reading through it, share it with other people, 
and um, you know know that information is power and with that power comes great responsibility so when you use this information especially if you use this information attack ideas not people if this video resonates with you leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all first time here be sure to subscribe and click the bell the bell doesn't always work so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter remember it would be impossible for me to do this without your support so please join my patreon or buy me a coffee on paypal and always attack ideas not people